Big Meg, a visual audios production, read by Laura E. Smith and written by Tony Dews. Early sunlight glittered gold on the leaves. Big Meg woke when a slight rise in temperature told him it was time to move. He raised his head to taste the air. It was still cool, and a slight breeze carried smells to his flickering tongue. His ears picked out no sound other than the rustle of leaves and the creak of branches high above the ground. His head swiveled, the folds and wattles of his neck that served as camouflage shifting as he did. He decided it was safe to move, and that it was early enough to find food. He stretched each leg in turn, encouraging blood flow through his limbs so he could move and find enough sunlight in which to warm himself. Even for a megalania, Big Meg was a large male, 23 feet long and weighing nearly two tons. His sand-colored skin was mottled with gray-green stripes and patches. He had lived many years, more than most of his species, and felt no aging in his muscles and bones. He feared nothing, except a scent that was new and strange, a taste that had recently arrived in the forest. He feared it as he feared anything new, and instinctively knew that something about it was dangerous. He avoided that smell whenever he could. Tall eucalyptus forests and woodland dominated the land, dense enough to give shelter and provide places to lie in ambush, but clear where necessary so he could move easily. Nothing had fallen to his bite for too long now. Hunger forced him to move. He didn't like that. It brought him to attention and his brain screamed fear. But the urge was too great. He needed to eat, and he needed to eat soon. His stomach growled with hunger, and when he opened his jaws, he expelled gas. He moved slowly at first, his forelimbs aching. Slowly, they began to work, the stiffness eased just enough for him to move his bulk between the trees. They shook as he pushed past, and wary birds screeched in alarm. Now he could be seen, his movements noted by possums that scattered, and he vaguely heard the excited chatter of birds warning other forest dwellers that he was around and moving. His chances of finding anything on Wary were slim, but the urge to find clear sun overruled his hunger, as it always did first thing in the morning. Moving might make prey scarcer than it had been, but he had no choice. Big Meg knew that the screeches and panicked rustlings would settle down, and then he would be able to hunt with a better chance of success. He felt no panic, and he knew that his presence would be forgotten, so he didn't need to move slowly. Care was unnecessary. He soon found a clear patch where a tree had recently fallen. Moving into the center, he rested his haunches on the ground and let the sun do its work. Soon he felt his blood warm and flow. He was large enough that his internal temperature stayed fairly stable. Fifteen minutes later he was ready to move, and he tasted the air again to decide where to hunt. In each direction the signs were the same. Little was out there. He reached into his memory recalling a place nearby where the hunting had been good. He headed west toward a stand of trees that reached high overhead, where dappled shadows that shifted in the breeze would help conceal him. It was over a mile away, and he strode as fast as he could. The hunting was always good there, and Big Meg was hungry. He reached the copse and moved slowly. Shifting his limbs quietly, he found his hiding place. Emus and Jenny Ornis nested here. Big Meg could move quickly, and more than one of these had fallen to his jaws. He was confident that nothing suspected he was here, so he settled down. He had learned well as he grew, learned the value of patience and being prepared. Sometimes the lessons had been harsh, but he had survived. He shifted his limbs into a lunging position. Memories came to him of his life. His first memory was hunger. You have been listening to Big Meg, written by Tony Dews and read by Laurie E. Smith. More visual audios productions are on sale now on audible.com and audible.co.uk.